that 85% of people across the globe have low self-esteem, which actually makes it harder for them to be confident in really who they are. Our next guest, through years of personal experience and research, says confidence is a choice that we can all make, and she's going to give us a roadmap on how to do it in her new book called Gravitas. Lisa Sun, my friend also, joins us now. It's so great to see you. Congratulations. Thanks. Your book is coming out next week. Nice so, you, you know, you're targeting women here when we talk about confidence, but this book really could speak to a lot of young people who are entering the workforce, entering the world for their first time. What are you hoping that readers take away? Look, when I was 22 years old in my first job, I was told I didn't have any gravitas. I didn't have any confidence. And if you were like me, I was stumped. And so I've spent the last 20 years as an owner of a fashion company, as a management consultant, helping women in boardrooms and dress rooms discover their confidence. So this book is really for anyone who wants to turn a moment of self-doubt into a burst of self-confidence. Oh, I love that. Give us some tips. What are some hacks? How do you do that? Well, the, we, in my book, lay out a three-part approach. The first is confidence is a choice and a mindset. Think you all have children, right? Five-year-olds love themselves, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and then in our adolescence, there's all these forces. We identified six forces in my book that act against us. They hold us back from being confident. So you gotta make a choice and realize that confidence comes from the inside. It's a mindset that then leads to a behavior. There's something really cool in the book. It's a, a, a quiz, right, that you can take that sort of helps you identify that confidence comes in many forms. It's not just the thing we think of maybe like the way that we've seen it modeled right. by yeah. men or, you know, that kind of traditional alpha way of being confident. There are other ways that you can express your confidence. Well, and, and that's the second part of my book, which is we did a thousand person quantitative study of confidence in America. And we realized that so much ink has been spilled about leading and performing, mm -hmm. right? I'm in charge, I stand on a stage, I'm assertive. There's six other types of confidence mm. because guess what? 80% of us have these other six. Mm. And that, those are other routes to self-belief. So we have myconfidencelanguage.com where you get to take a quiz and it's an inventory of your strengths because confidence is an understanding and appreciation of your own abilities. It's not about performance or bravado or swagger. Can you give us uh -huh. sort of an example when you say there's other six? Like, what do those other six look like? What, so, what are they? There are four that women have the most often, 74%. Two of them are called achieving and knowing. We get things done, and we're the smartest person in the room. The other two are giving and believing. You support others, and you're optimistic. So I think of the first two as the hidden figures women, mm -hmm. right? Think about all the bias they face, mm -hmm. and they were the smartest women in the room. That was their route to confidence. The second one, I think of Ted Lasso, <laughs> believing. Optimism. He was so underestimated as a leader, and yet he brought optimism. So there's all these other ways you can feel confident that are not about performing right. and being assertive. Yeah, the things that we typically think of. Uh, talk to us a little bit about these superpowers and how do you harness them in yourself? If you were saying, hey, you know what, I am kind of an optimist, or I am kind of a doer. You know, there are these eight superpowers. And by the way, my mom has all eight. I love she that. Said, she, she said, she said, I'm all of these. I'm all of these. But once you discover your confidence language, which of these superpowers you have, it's really fun to realize how powerful you are. I've had so many people come up to me and show me their quiz results and say, I think I've been underestimating myself. I've been under leveraging my power. And then I ask people to say, think of a time when you were really powerful. Connect it to a memory. It's like that movie Inside Out, those core memories. If you remember a time when you were at your peak, and then you look at it through the lens of your confidence language, you really believe in yourself. You expand the possibilities. You break out of a comfort zone because you're like, I can do that. Look at, I've done it before. And thank you, Lisa, for giving me the vocabulary to know that I can do it again. Lisa, this has been such a good conversation, especially because I think people have a very narrow definition of what confidence even is. is. So thank you for helping us sort of expand the boundaries of what it means to be a confident person. All of us have the permission to be confident, right? And I think we're creating a new vocabulary. It's inclusive, it's empowering, and the book takes you step by step through how to do that. Author of that. Gravitas, the book is beautiful, it's helpful, it's a great gift, I think, for grads. Lisa Sun, this was so fun. Thank you so Thank much you, for taking us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, coming up.